Hello, my name is Zimbai. I'm a fourth year and a graduate studying at Northeast Agricultural University. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to tell you about something of breast cancer. The paper I will be presenting today is titled "Correlation Analysis of Expression Levels of NASAP1." And NAC2 leads different subtypes of breast cancer prognosis. We expect that genes can be used for early diagnosis and prognosis of breast cancer, and provide indications for the development and the therapeutic tools and individualized treatment for breast cancer. Now let's look at the aims and methods of the experiment. We want to find genes that could be used to analyze the prognosis of breast cancer. Enter them here for analysis. We first screened a large number of breast cancer-related genes. Such as estrogen genes, cell division-related genes, apoptosis-related genes, etc. In the Kaplan Meier database, to analyze their correlation with breast cancer prognosis, and from the subjects of this study, NASAP1 and NAC2, through the analysis, we get the following results. First. We analyze the expression of NASAP1 and NAC2 in various tumor tissues and breast cancer tissues. Pan cancer analysis showed that NASAP1 and NAC2 were highly expressed in 22 cancers, including breast, liver, and skin cancers, indicating that these two genes are highly correlated with cancer. In the analysis of the expression of NASAP1 and NAC2 in normal inflammatory and tumor tissues of breast, it was shown that there were low expression in normal tissues, significantly high expressed in tumor tissues, and equally high expressed in inflammatory tissues, but lower than tumor tissues. Next, we analyze the correlation between the survival of breast cancer patients and the expression of NASAP1 and NAC2. There are three criteria for assessing survival: recurrence-free survival, so that RFIs, overall survival, so that OIs, and distant metastasis-free survival, so that DMFIs. The analysis showed that NASAP1 and NAC2 were negatively correlated with RFIs and OIs in breast cancer at high expression, indicating that NASAP1 and NAC2 could be used as a determination of survival in breast cancer patients. But the expression of NASAP1 and NAC2 was not correlated with DMFIs in breast cancer. Then we analyze the prognosis of NASAP1 and NAC2 for different types of breast cancer. For the analysis of prognosis of different staging of breast cancer. We analyze the prognosis of RFIs with strong correlation with NASAP1 and NAC2. As shown in the figure, NASAP1 and NAC2 were negatively correlated with RFIs in ER positive, PR positive, HER2 negative breast cancer. From the chart of the left, we can see that. Gene expression is also negatively correlates with Lumina A and Lumina B subtypes of breast cancer. Finally, we analyze the prognosis of NASAP1 and NAC2 in relation to lymph node metastasis in breast cancer. 
The expression of NASAP-1 and SNAP-2 was associated with survival in breast cancer patients with obvious nodes, lymph nodes, and metastases. But the survival of breast cancer patients with lymph nodes and metastases was significantly lower. The effect of NASAP-1 and SNAP-2 on the prognosis of breast cancer was limited to patients with low and intermediate grades, and the survival of patients became shorter with the progression of breast cancer disease. Here is the discussion. First of all, let's understand about the types of breast cancer. Breast cancer can be staged based on two ways. One is based on three receptors expressed on the surface of tumor tissue. Estrogen receptor, ER, progesterone receptor, PR, and human epidermal growth factor receptor 2. HER2 can be classified into five subtypes of breast cancer regardless of whether HER2 is expressed. As long as the tumor expressed ER or PR is said to be hormone receptor positive breast cancer, HRBC, while breast cancers that do not express ER and PR are further divided into two subtypes based on whether they express HER2 or not with tumors that do not express any of the three receptors being referred to as triple negative breast cancer, TNBC. And then, breast cancer can be classified into four subtypes according to the nature of breast cancer, basal like Lumina A, Lumina B, and HER2 enriched breast cancer among which Lumina A and Lumina B breast cancer can express ER, while HER2 enriched breast cancer could not express ER. Based on the previous description of breast cancer subtypes, we can know that NASAP1 and SNAP2 expression is negatively associated with RFIs in HRBC. According to the above analysis, we understand the indicative role of NASAP1 and SNAP2 on the prognosis of breast cancer patients. Then, why can they play similar roles? NASAP1 is a microtube associated protein that binds to microtubules and stabilizes them. Microtubule structure to maintain the function of spindle microtubules around the chromosomes during mitosis. NAC2 is a serine and serenine protein kinase involved in the control of centosome segregation and spindle formation in mitotic cells. The high expression of these two genes is detected. It indicates that the cells are undergoing abnormal metosis, which is likely indicative of cancer development and prognosis. NASAP1 and NAC2 are also closely related to the vent beta cantonin pathway. And when the vent beta cantonin pathway is overactive, cell proliferation may be out of control and tumor cells appear. NASAP1 is able to enhance beta cantonin signal by inhibiting the activation of GSK3 beta. Accumulated beta cantonin aggregates and translocates to the nucleus and is able to promote the transcription of downstream cell growth-related genes. Accelerating of the proliferation and evasion of tumor cells. NAC2, on the other hand, 
can activate the vent bit kidney pathway by regulating the expression of what's one and promote the proliferation of tumor cells. The two genes identified in this study, NASAP1 and NAC2, can be used as negative prognostic indicators for breast cancer. Thank you very much for your attention.